are now joined by number 11 ranked UFC welterweight Jeff Neal. And we'll take our first set of questions from Jay Anderson with Kate Side Press. Hey, Jeff. Uh, good to see you back. Good to see you healthy. Um, I wanted to first off uh, say just congrats on the main event as well. I imagine that's uh, pretty exciting and a good confidence boost to know that the uh, promotion would turn to you, especially when there's two former champs on the card. Yeah, they, it's it's really an honor to uh, to be on the main event right now. You know, uh, I, I wasn't expecting it. I was expecting just like a regular fight, you know what I mean? But uh, for Wonder Boy to accept the fight with me and uh, the UFC to actually let it happen, you know, it, uh, it means a lot, you know, and uh, I'm excited to go out there and showcase what I can do. And, I mean, you've had a, a great run in the UFC so far, but do you think this, uh, with the added attention, could be the one that really connects you to a larger fan base? Yeah, for sure. You know, I'm, I'm fighting a real, real uh, tough opponent. You know, uh, people uh, bring up his age, you know what I mean? 37 that, that he's 37, but he's still in his prime. You know what I mean? I feel like if you, if you watch his last fight with Luke, he's still wonder boy, you know what I mean? Nothing, no, nothing has been lost. No steam has been lost. And, uh, you know, if I get a good win over him, you know, like that, that will solidify my uh, status as a uh, title contender. And I wanted to go back to uh, August. Uh, you know, you had a very serious illness, an infection that went septic. Uh, it's good to see you back. And it was clearly yeah. a very scary situation, man. But uh, I'm kind of wondering how that experience changed your outlook, be it, you know, on fighting or just in life in general. Honestly, it, didn't, it really didn't change anything. Uh, I always had a real positive outlook on life before that, you know what I mean? And that probably is the, my mindset when, uh, before I got sick is, was probably helped me get through the sickness. You know what I mean? Uh, because the whole time I was sick, not once it crossed my mind that I wouldn't be fighting again. Not once it crossed my mind that I was going to die. Like one, one moment I had a, like a thought that like, Hey, I need to get something checked out because I really might be dying. But, uh, other than that, like I knew I'll be fine and I knew I'll push through and make it through. Once you were uh, released from the hospital, I mean, how long was it before you felt a hundred percent and, you know, we're training full force in the gym. Um, it like, uh, right after I got out of the hospital, I, uh, I, I was, uh, suppose I just had to sit at my apartment for about a, like a month, you know what I mean? And do nothing, nothing at all. So I just sat in there, did nothing. And then I got back in the gym after that. And, uh, I was kind of scared to really push it. You know what I mean? Cause, uh, I can just heart failure. So I'm in the gym. I'm worried about my heart stopping. Like I'm always checking my pulse, like every, uh, every other uh, minute, you know? So, uh, it took me a while, but after a month of just being in the gym, slowly getting back into it, I started getting uh, more comfortable and, uh, I was able to push it. And once I got word on the fight, I was already in the gym full swing. So it was, it was just like, I just had to keep climbing up the hill. As a guy who's had a few uh, heart issues over the years, I feel you. I'm checking your pulse. Yeah. Uh, preparing for wonder boy, man, his, uh, his style is so well known, but there aren't a lot of guys out there quite like him. Did you bring anyone in to mimic that in sparring or do anything special to prepare for him? Um, then nothing special as far as like my training camp. Uh, I didn't bring anybody in either. You know what I mean? I was going to bring a couple people in, but, uh, we had the guys at our gym that were, uh, solid uh, training partners you know i had uriah hall ryan span and uh stevie win charles bird also he's good at uh mimicking other people's style and uh those the first three i named they all come from uh karate traditional karate backgrounds uh kind of so you know what i mean they they gave me real good looks and real good uh insight on the things i need to do and the things i shouldn't do going into this fight wonder boy and uh last one for me i mean obviously now you're in a five round fight how does that change things for you it doesn't change anything. You, uh, you know, I, I haven't fought any, uh, five round fights except for one time, uh, in, uh, in the regional circuit, but, uh, even my co my coach, uh, coach safe, he, uh, prepares us for five, five, five minute rounds, regardless if it's a three, five minute round fight, you know? So, uh, I'm, I'm ready for it. You know, it doesn't, it didn't change anything in my camp and it didn't change my mindset going into this fight. All right. Well, thanks very much. And best of luck this weekend. No problem. Thank you, man. We'll take our next set of questions from Omar Mursavici with S Sport. Hello, so, Joel. How are you? I'm doing good. How are you doing, man? Thanks, man. Thanks. You have been a winning streak. Do you think you beating Stephen will be enough for the title match? Say that one more time. Will, do you think you beating Stephen will be enough for a title match? Yeah, yeah, maybe. It might be. Uh, I might have to get one more fight uh, after I beat him. Um, you know, depending on what I do. Like I said, if I do like a spinning backwards tornado kick and knock him out, uh, then I'll then I'll for sure get a title shot after that. But you know, uh, 
if, if it, even if it's like a really, really good fight and I look really impressive, but, uh, you know, I'm just looking to get the win and one more fight after that, then fight for the title. That's my plan. Okay. My other question, can, can we say it's the biggest match of your career? Yeah, it's the biggest matchup of my career for sure. Yeah, you know what I mean? Uh, and honestly, every every fight in the UFC has been the biggest matchup of, of my career. You know, like every every fight is is detrimental even before the UFC. It was it was even worse before the UFC because you know like you can't take any losses on the regional circuit because that would derail your chances of being in the UFC. So each fight I've had is is always meant the world to me, it meant everything to me and it's always been a must win. So like this fight I'm walking into it is a must win. I have to win. I can't lose. I won't lose. Okay, my last question. What do you think about Colby, Usman, and Jorge Triangle on welterweight division? I'm, I don't think much about them. I, right now, I'm only thinking about uh, Wonder Boy. We'll talk about them after. Okay, thank you. Good luck on Saturday. Cool, thank you. Next. <laughs> We'll take the next set of questions from Damon Martin with MMA Hey, Jeff. Uh, you know, coming into this fight, you know, a lot has been made about, you know, Wonder Boy's ranking number five in the world. And there would be something to be said about him having the pressure on him because, you know, obviously you're lower ranked in the rankings. But do you feel like that there is a certain level of pressure on you because this is your chance? You know, this is your opportunity to get in that mm -hmm. top five. Uh, do, do you feel that a little bit? I mean, do you embrace that pressure? I'm, I, I, I say I don't feel any pressure, but I mean, there is pressure there, you know, if I'm being honest, but, uh, I, know, I don't let the pressure get to me, you know, it's it, in my eyes, it's just another fight. You know what I mean? I'm gonna go out there and I'm gonna fight to the best of my ability. And, um, uh, if that's not enough, then that's not enough. That just means I need to go back to the gym and train more. So, uh, Right. Like in this moment right now, there's no pressure. I don't feel any pressure. I'm, I know what I'm capable of, capable of, and I know I'm prepared for this moment. So I'm just going to go out there and do what I do. Without getting too deep in the woods on game plan. And because obviously you're not, you know, Jorge Masvidal, you're not Vicente Luque, but when you look at the guys who have lost to wonder boy, what do you feel like is the biggest mistake they're making in terms of the way they're approaching the fight? Because he does have a very creative, very unique style, uh, but there are certain guys who just, they just haven't been able to adapt to it. They haven't been able to figure it out. What do you feel like is the biggest mistake guys have made with him? Um, a lot of them, they take too much time trying to figure him out. You know, uh, I, it's, it's, so, it's real hard to give my take on it without giving too much away what I'm going to do. But what I will leave it at is they, they, uh, they spend a lot of time. They he, Warner boy has a, does a good job at making the other person think more than they should. We've seen, you know, wonder boy, uh, you know, his, his chin has been tested before, obviously, you know, credit to Anthony Pettis getting that crazy knockout over him, but he's taken big shots from guys like Tyron Woodley. who I think most people would agree is uh, you know, one of the punchers in the division and survived. Yeah. What does it say if you're able to go out there and knock out, you know, not just beat wonder boy, but knock out a guy like wonder boy. I mean, it says I got power, you know what I mean? Uh, that's, that's how I, that's uh, like when I envision the fight, that's one of the things I envision, like me, uh, taking it by knockout, you know what I mean? But I know it's not an easy thing to do. You know what I mean? He he's been hit by some heavy hitters and he hasn't went out. Uh, he got hit by Pettis, but that was one of those, one of those, just one of those punches. But, um, it just says I got power and I'm ready for the belt. You know what I mean? If I could take out wonder boy, there's no, there's no denying me. You know what I mean? And last one for me, Jeff, you know, both of you and Wonder Boy, I talked about you guys before the fight, both of you kind of express, you know, similar feelings on the whole, you know, hype versus reality thing in the welterweight division. Mm -hmm. You know, so much talk. Is, and obviously guys like Colby have proven themselves, but they also talk quite a bit. Um, but are you, you know, are you okay with kind of that workmanlike attitude that you have where you're not going to say crazy things to get attention? You're just going to go out there and fight. Like, are you confident that that will get you to where you want to go in terms of the title shot or contender spot after this fight. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to stick with uh, what got me here. You know what I mean? I didn't get here by running my mouth uh, and that's not me. You know what I mean? I'm not going to, I'm not going to put out this persona. That that's not me, you know? So uh, I'm, I'm going to stay true to myself. And um, if, if, uh, if me staying true, not true to myself, doesn't get me to the title, then I'll be, I'll go to sleep happy. You know what I mean? I'm going to keep my dignity and keep uh, my honor intact. And, uh, I'll, I'll be happy, but uh, I really feel like I can get there just by my uh, my fighting style and what I do in the cage. You know what I mean? I, I, people want to see fighters like me going out there, you know what I mean, striking, trying to knock the other person out, you know? So uh, 
if, if I keep on winning, keep knocking people out, I'll get to where I need to be. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Yeah, no, let me we have five questions from Pablo Santa Maria with Nuti and Anay Ecuador. Hey, Jeff, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. It's been a year since you fight the last time. So what can you expect from you in this fight? Uh, are you happy? What do you feel coming into this fight? Um, I, I just feel like uh, that year, uh, it was a blessing, but there was also a lot of bad things that happened this year. But uh, I, I got a lot of time to work on different things. You know what I mean? I started the year working on uh, different things in my style and my, uh, in my game. And... I didn't know why, why I was doing it. I was just doing it just to play around, just to try something different. And then when I got this uh, call about the Wonder Boy fight, I'm like, this is perfect because I've been working on this all year. So I'm going to get a chance to uh, showcase the things I've been working on and uh, let's see if it works. <laughs> okay, I get it. So you were supposed to face Neil Magny and then you fell out of the fight. And when you get offered Wonder Boy, what was your reaction when they offered the fight against Wonder Boy? Yeah, I was I was surprised first, you know what I mean, uh, for Wonder Boy. Like, I, I had no, like, you know what I mean, when I thought about the potential people I can fight, Wonder Boy wasn't even, like, in the, the realm of thought, you know what I mean? I wasn't even thinking about him. Uh, you know what I mean? I thought he deserved somebody above him, you know what I mean? I've been thinking that, I've been saying that for a while, but uh, he accepted the fight with me, and I couldn't be happier, you know what I mean? Uh, for whatever reason, I'm grateful, you know what I mean? Uh, he's giving me a shot at uh, at really making a name for myself, and I appreciate that. Okay, so uh, where do you think Wonderboy is more dangerous? We know he's a very good striker, but <laughs> do you think like the middle kicks or the push kicks are the uh, important key in his game? Um, he, he's honestly his hands are, hands are dangerous too. You know what I mean? His uh, his kicks sets up his hands. You know what I mean? People start getting so worried about his push kicks and his what he can do with his legs. They forget that he has two fists hiding down below his waist and he cracks people with those. So uh, he, he's dangerous everywhere when it comes to striking. You know what I mean? He might he might have some def deficiencies when it comes to like up close, but uh, he's real good at keeping the distance. So uh, he, he's dangerous everywhere. Okay. Uh, so what's your prediction for this fight, Nick? Um, my, it's the same as every fight. You know what I mean? Uh, either a first or second round finish or a, a three round war, you know, or a five round war, you know, I'm fighting championship. Round, so, uh, but uh, not championship round, but I'm pretending like it is. Uh, but yeah, is it, that's a, either five round war or a second, first, second round finish. I get it. Would you like to send a message to your Ecuadorian fans? To who? My career fans? Ecuadorian. 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 Uh -huh. <laughs> Hey, y'all, uh, I appreciate y'all supporting me. You know, uh, I'm kind of new in this game, but uh, I'm about to make a big name for myself on Saturday. Thank you very much, Jeff, and good luck in your fight. Thank you. We'll take our next set of questions from Eric Adison with Kimura.sg. Hi, Um So earlier in the year, you were talking about how you had to pick up your serving job while waiting for your next fight. Um, how much did that affect your training and have you been able to focus on your fight camp 100% for this fight? Um, it, it, uh, it really never does affect my training. You know what I mean? I've always, I fit my days that I work in around the time that I'm not doing anything when there's like a layoff from the gym or like, you know what I mean? I'm not training. So, uh, and I like working, so it's, it's, there's nothing to it. So, uh, it, it didn't affect anything. Uh, I stopped working about a month before the fight, you know what I mean? So about a month ago, I stopped working just so I can uh, get more rest. Cause you know what I mean? When it comes to surfing, you're always on your feet, running back and forth. And I was working, I worked till like two, three o'clock in the morning, most of the time. So uh, I took a little time off, but uh, yeah, working, working's work. I love it. You know, I, when I get done with this fight, I'm gonna take a month off and I'm probably gonna get back to work again. So that's what I do. That's really cool. And uh, so you've been mentioning in your previous interviews that uh, you've been a little bit frustrated about that no one wants to fight you because of your uh, ranking. Are you hoping that a win against Wonderboy will give you a better chance of staying active in uh, 2021? Yeah, for sure. For sure. I'm really hoping that, you know what I mean, regardless of the outcome, you know what I mean, I, it's going to put a lot of, a lot of them. Um, a lot of like hype, not hype, but uh, like, you know what I mean? A lot of people are going to really want to see me back out there again. So uh, I'm really hoping a good performance, anything, you know what I mean? Of course I'm expecting to win. So uh, that's what I'm going to do, but you know, it, it's going to put me where I need to be after this uh, weekend. And my last one is um, Hamza Chimaya was supposed to headline the card and he's not one of the most hyped up fighters in the welter division after just three fights. Um, 
do you think the hype is real and would you like to face him in 2021 if possible i don't know if the hype is real uh you know what i mean uh we'll see if the hype is real when he fights leon you know uh people always say like all that hype and stuff you know what i mean i get it like from a fighter perspective i don't like it you know what i mean because he did, he hasn't done enough but you know what i mean when it comes to business like you know, like I can't hate on the man. So he, uh, if I was in his same shoes, I would be doing the same thing, you know? So, uh, props to him. But, uh, I honestly haven't seen enough to say the hype is real or not, you know, uh, him fighting Leon is going to be a good test to see where he's really at. All right. Thank you. No problem. We'll take our next set of questions from Colton Cruz with four to win podcasts. Hey, Mr. Neil, how you doing? Doing good. How you doing? I'm doing fantastic. Thank you for your time. Um, after all the health concerns you had, how do you feel this adversity affected you? Uh, were there any lessons to learn or any silver linings from all these unfortunate situations? Um, you know, uh, kind of in a way, you know what I mean? Like, like I was saying earlier, like, you know what I mean? I always have a good positive mindset. So the me being sick really didn't change any of that. Uh, I did lose a fight with Neil Magny, but, uh, my mom told me, you know what I mean? Don't worry. You know, God has something, uh, greater plan for you and uh you know what i mean uh months or two later i get this uh call about fighting wonder boy so i mean i guess she was right you know uh and i'm 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 happy i'm grateful absolutely um you're one of the prospects who won a contract in the contender series and since then you've been undefeated in the ufc uh what do you think about the opportunity that that the contender series uh provides uh to share your skills in the most prominent promotion in mma uh, it, it was great. You know what I mean? Uh, when I fought for the contender series, I really didn't know too much about it. Cause it was like, uh, I guess it, j it just started. I think it was like the second week or something that I fought on. And, um, I had just fought the week before, like I fought Friday and then the next Friday I got the call to go up on the Tuesday to fight. So, you know what I mean? I, I had no expectations. I didn't know the gravity of the situation I was coming into, you know what I mean? And, uh, I won my fight and, um, I didn't think I was going to get a contract and I, I got a contract and I was like, damn, I'm in the UFC now. So, uh, uh, the, the Dana White contender series, that was, uh, it, it was, it's, it's great. You know, it's, it's good for all these up and coming fighters that want a shot. You know what I mean? It's like a tryout pretty much. So it's good to get a litmus test on all these fighters and see how good they are. You said that, uh, Michael Chiesa and, uh, Santiago Ponsinibio apparently did not want to fight you. Uh, if you beat Wonderboy, it would be difficult for someone else to refuse to fight you. You would be undeniable since you would probably enter the upper echelon of the division. Do you have any, anyone else in mind at this point? Mm, no, not right now. You know, uh, I'm not going to look past Wonderboy. You know, that's, that's a, that's a wall I got to get through. You know what I mean? Like he, he's not a, he's not somebody to look past and think about who I'm going to fight next. Once I get past him, I'm going to start thinking about who, who I'm going to fight next. But right now it's just Wonder Boy on my mind. We're ending this oh, yeah. ride uh, called 2020 and a lot has happened and I'm pretty sure we're all looking forward to next year. Uh, what would be your holiday greeting for the MMA community? Say that one more time. I'm sorry. I said that we're ending this crazy ride called 2020 and a mm -hmm. lot has happened and I'm pretty sure we're all looking forward to next year. What would be your holiday greeting for the MMA community? Oh, a great fight. You know, um, either I get deliver or give, give the MMA community a knockout or I give them a five round war. You know what I mean? I, I think people are really looking forward to a five round battle. You know, I'm not, you know, who wants to go in there for five rounds, but, um, uh, I'm gonna give them, I'm gonna give the fans what they want. Best of luck on your fight, sir. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. We'll take our last set of questions from Gabriel Gonzalez with Kate Side Press. Hey, Jeff, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Um, quick question. So as a server, do you work at a restaurant that happens to show UFC fights? Um, yeah, no, yeah, no, they don't, they don't do the pay-per-view at the one I work at, but if it's on a uh, ESPN, they'll, uh, they'll put it on TV's, uh, show them. So when you're fighting, do your coworkers all, you know, does just their service drop down because they're all distracted watching you? <laughs> yeah, for sure. They, it always does. Like, uh, even when it's pay-per-view, like there's sometimes they have like pay-per-view cards, they'll like stream it in the back and then, uh, though the guests would be out there thirsty and starving because the server's in the back watching me fight. L luckily, a lot of my fights, I get it done quick. So, uh, they don't stay in the back for too long, but yeah, they, they'll, they'll drop the customers just to watch me fight. 
they got their priorities right. Yeah, um, <laughs> you would be. There have been several contender series alumni who have been in main events. If you win, you'd be the first contender series alum to win a UFC oh, main no. event. Does that mean anything to you? I didn't, I didn't even know that was a thing. It, it, and then really doesn't mean nothing. I want to be the first one to get a belt. That's what really matters. There's a lot going on at welterweight, and I just want to get your take on it. In 2021, do you think that Gilbert Burns will be the one to take on Usman next, or do you think a guy, maybe yourself, maybe Leon or Hamza or somebody, could slide into the title fight? I, I don't know. Um, really don't know. I mean, it's, it, right now, I, th I thought it was Gilbert. I didn't know there was anything that was going to say it wasn't Gilbert fighting him. So uh, I'm going to say, yeah, it's Gilbert. That's Gilbert's uh, shot, so he gets the next crack at it. And that's actually all from me, man. Thank you. Cool. Thank you. That's all we have for you today, Jeff. Thank you. All right. Cool. Thank you.